But if this weekly chart gets traction, we could have a very strong rally and uh, could be a very different picture by the end of the year. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Chris Vermoulin, chief market strategist of the technicaltraders.com, explains why the stock market may have bottomed and what's next for the rest of the year and beyond. If you're as excited about exploring the fascinating world of cryptocurrencies as we are, hit that subscribe button now. Don't miss out on our insightful discussions, market updates, and game-changing insights that could potentially shape your financial future. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been a bad month. What's going on? Is this just seasonal? Yeah, I mean, you could you could say it has to do with some seasonality-wise. I mean, I can show you the charts, kind of what I'm seeing here in the markets. And this is the weekly chart of the SP500. Seasonality-wise, you know, the second half of September, the first half of October, that one-month window is typically a bearish time in the markets. And we have seen that when we zoom in here. This is the weekly chart. The last four bars have been down. Uh, we might have still a, a little bit more weakness here, but overall, we are... I think going to be primed and ready for what could be a, a very exciting and, and bullish uh, close to the year if the stock market can get traction. And the reason I, I bring that up is when we look at this big picture here, uh, the chart pattern has got a very nice formation where it has formed a, a rounding uh, bottom. It's had a very strong rally to the upside. And I, from a technical standpoint, I like a complex, they call it a complex correction. It's an ABC or a three wave correction, which is A, B, and then C. And it's this, this C wave down that breaks this previous pivot low that flushes the market out. In the last two weeks, we have seen lots of panic selling across the stock market. Shares are just being dumped across the board. Uh, you could argue it's, it's seasonality wise. We have had the Fed come out, talk about rates staying up or going higher. I mean, all of these things are more or less uh, short-term bearish on the markets, but this three-wave correction is what cleanses uh, the market of weak uh, investors, meaning they're panicking out, and those shares are all landing in the hands of new traders, new investors who are comfortable at this price, who want to hold things uh, going forward. So this is kind of a cleansing, and it, it, if this is a bull flag pattern or a pennant formation that's kind of forming, we could see another very big move up going into the end of the year, which seasonality wise, as you know, is a very strong quarter for the markets. And maybe we're going to come up to the 2022 highs. Maybe we're going to blast through those. It's going to be very interesting to see where we go. So, I mean, just to kind of clarify, short term wise, we are in a downtrend right now. But if this weekly chart gets traction, we could have a very strong rally and uh, could be a very different picture by the end of the year. When you look at this chart, do you think to yourself, I'm going to switch positioning, meaning if the short term trend is still down or there's a more of a risk downwards and upwards, let's put it that way. Would you stay would you stay short or on the sidelines now before you see positive indicators or definitive indicators for a rebound? Or are you just going to stay long and ride this out because the longer term trend, like you said, is up? Right. So it really depends on the strategy. So our long-term investor strategy, which runs off the weekly chart, is still long because I do think the, the long-term charts are pointing to higher prices. Now, for our shorter-term strategy, we're sitting on the sidelines. We exited a little while ago. We're sitting in BIL, which is a, a three to uh, a three to six month uh, treasury note or one to three month treasury note ETF. So literally, we're sitting on the sidelines collecting interest each day and just waiting for a new opportunity. So we're not going to try and pick a bottom here. We're going to wait for the trend to change direction, start moving higher for the moving averages to turn up. And then we're going to look at what other sectors and commodities are doing. And if money is flowing into the market again, or if it is just kind of a kind of a dead cat bounce, sometimes there's not a lot of momentum behind the market. And uh, when we look at majority of sectors, they are all in both a short term and a longer term downtrend. So there's not a whole lot of um, 
momentum in this market right now. So we need to let the, the market rally and we need to see confirmation that a lot of sectors are taking part of it before we jump in. So we won't buy in at the bottom. We'll be getting in at some point once it's made a bottom and is confirming that it's in a new uptrend. So uh, on Wednesday, we're speaking on Wednesday, the uh, ADP data came out. Uh, private payrolls numbers increased by 89,000 for the month, which is down from an upwardly revised 180,000 and below the 160,000 estimate from Dow Jones. As a result, Treasury yields pulled back slightly and, uh, and stocks uh, rose on the day. Can we just take a look at yields? Because yields have been pushing markets around somewhat the 10 year in particular uh we've seen levels not seen since 2007 the market is near an all time well not uh, near a 15 year high what's next based on the charts yeah i think last time you ta we talked i was talking about how i think interest rates could on the 10 year here get up to five five and a half maybe even five and three quarter percent i think i mentioned back then and it is breaking out the when we look at the you know the big kind of massive trend here, we've definitely reversed. We've been in a falling environment uh, for interest rates for a long time. Now they're definitely in an uptrend. We haven't seen this this price level since 2007, which is kind of you know right when the stock market actually started the last major correction and went into the financial crisis. So it's interesting that we're coming back to this uh, price level, and I feel like the market is um, while well, the stock market's holding up and doing all right. Uh, you know, I feel like the behind the scenes of the economy are slowly crumbling. People are starting to, I think, be concerned about money. And this, the, the, the rates and mortgage rates are changing so fast. I was talking to somebody last week and they have um, a 1.9% mortgage. It comes up for renewal in March. And he's very worried and frustrated because he could have sold his house about a year and a half ago for about $250,000 more. He's listed it now for uh, 250 grand less and he can't get a bite. He can't sell it. And when his mortgage comes up for renewal, his mortgage rate is going to triple. And he's like, I don't even make enough in a month to pay for the mortgage. And so I think we're going to see this. This is in Canada. There's three to five year mortgages are the most popular. And we're going to start seeing the three years coming up in the five years. And it is going to be a, a nightmare because of these high rates uh, mortgage rates, and I think they're even higher in the states. I think mortgage rates are up around 8% in the states versus 6% here uh, in Canada. So I, I think we're, you know, just tip of the scale. We are right back to interest rate levels that we saw the last financial crisis take place. Homes are way overvalued. They've shot up so high. And now everybody's going to get hit with a really high mortgage payment when they go up for renewal. And if we get into a recession, and, and jobs start getting cut and employees start to get nervous, the banks are going to tighten up and it'll be even harder for people to renew their mortgage, even if they have the funding to potentially support their new interest rates. So the, the rate, whole air, area around interest rates and mortgages is going to be really interesting uh, where, we're, where we're kind of headed. I'm just curious, in this particular case, if somebody's not able to cover their mortgage payments when it ticks up, what's the option here? If you, if you sell your home and buy another one, you're still paying high rates. Right. Well, they would they would go to rent. Right. They have the rental market will get very strong. They have to liquidate uh, and rent. Uh, and that's just kind of the way that goes. And of course, the house will go into foreclosure. That's something my dad used to do years ago. Um, he used to pick up banks. The banks would actually call him and his partner uh, say, listen, we got all these properties. Which one do you want? Give us a bid. He used to be huge into real estate. Uh, so that's something that we could we could walk right back into, which nobody's even really thinking about it, or at least the general public. Uh, they don't realize the, the danger that's really around the corner, I think, when it comes to to real estate uh, risk. Uh, so let's just recap the S&P 500. And I want to move on to um, a different segment. Uh, what's the uh, what's the floor you're looking for? Uh, I, I would actually be looking for a bottom somewhere right about where we are, 40, 4,200, 4,300. I, I feel like the market is right now is very close to finding a, a, a tradable bottom or like a bounce for short-term momentum traders. And if this bounce, if we do find support here, if it has legs, we could be going right back up to 4,800 and testing the 2022 highs in a relatively short period of time. It could be reached by like Christmas, which would be a pretty exciting move um, uh, for a lot of investors to see that uh, recovery. 
just to clarify, when you said that we're in a short-term downtrend, you were talking about what has happened last month, right? You're not talking about this downtrend continuing because you you're, you said we're near a bottom. Am I am I correct? Am, right. The, the the pullback we've seen in the past uh, month and a half, uh, I I think I think it's about to find a bottom here, uh, and then I think we could go uh, higher it, to test the re recent highs uh, of 2022. Excellent. Well. Uh, Chris, let's uh, try something a little bit different. Instead of going to the next chart, I'm just going to ask you what you're most bullish on right now. Could be the stock markets that we've talked about just now. Could be something else. Yeah, I would say uh, it depends on the time frame you're looking at. But um, I mean, the dollar typically does well when there's fear. I think the dollar is going to have a little bit of a pullback. But overall, I think the U.S. dollar index is going to continue to to rally fairly significantly. Um, in, in terms of another asset, I mean, uh, if the markets are going to have a big correction, I don't really want to hold a whole lot of of stocks. Uh, really, I have to follow the trend. Right now, the trend is down for stocks in the short term. Uh, so to me, the dollar is kind of the one that's trending up very strong. Um, you can be in a, another type of position, which isn't all that exciting, but uh, bill, which is a, the treasury note, which you can just kind of collect uh, monthly interest and dividend payments. Uh, until there is a, a decisive move. Right now, the markets are oversold, um, and and I think trying to short a market here is is a high risk play. I think trying to pick a bottom or trying to play a bounce is also high risk. So, um, the dollar and, and the sidelines right now, until we get a new decisive move uh, in a, in a direction here, is kind of what I what I'm looking at. We saw the same thing back in the 2000 tech bubble. The dollar screamed higher. I think we're actually much more closer to a 2000 kind of uh, market reset that could take a long time to unfold. And I think the dollar is going to go back up and hit uh, what we saw back in, in 2000, which is around the, the 120 mark. But typically we see when when there's blood in the streets, uh, there's huge panic. The dollar is the one that that really goes up in value and stocks and everything else plummet. So to me, a uh, very strong play during a recession is actually the dollar. Uh, the, it's just played out very well in the past. Even on short-term charts, uh, the stock market sells off really big. The dollar tends to go up. Uh, so it's just kind of the way that I found that the dollar seems to move. And um, I really like it because it's a, a fairly consistent moving asset class. Uh, it's not really volatile. So a big day in it is like half a percent, three quarters of a percent. Uh, so it is a very controlled way to kind of. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Chris Vermoulin. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.